Hi and welcome to another five minute session and this time about ambient occlusion. So we have already touched it because we baked it when we did the vertex colors and now I will show you the node that you can use to create ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion will then enhance shadows so to make everything look really good you often use ambient occlusion to get this contrast between light and dark parts of your model. And to add it, you just press Shift A, go to Input, and you select Ambient Occlusion, and then you have it. What I'm doing right now will be in Cycles. There are some other options you need to set if you want to do this in Eevee. So use Cycles when you try this. So this is the Ambient Occlusion, and I have now a cube here, and I have Suzanne the monkey, and the material is on the monkey. So if I take the color to the base color, you can see now that we get some darkness around the ear here, but we get a little bit more on that ear. And the reason for that is that ambient occlusion takes the environment into account when creating where it should be dark. So if I move this cube here a little bit, just pressing GX, you can see that the ear now gets brighter again. And if I get it a bit closer, you can see that we get some darkness in here. In many occasions, you might want to increase the contrast between dark and bright, and then you can just add a color ramp. So you can press Shift A, Converter, and select a color ramp here, put it in, and if you then drag this arrow or tag here, you can see I get more darkness in both the ear here and on the ear there. Then you have some settings on the ambient occlusion. So one of the settings is the distance. So you can see now that it grows a bit when I increase the distance from this uh, cube here. So if I just move that away, you can put it away here. You can see it still affects, but if I then take down this, you can see it gets brighter because the distance where it measures everything from is shorter. We could also use only local. And if you use only local, it doesn't care about the cube. It only cares about the crevices that you have on your model here. So if you just want to have more darkness on your model, but not be aware of your environment, then just check only local. Another thing you can use is the inside. Inside will take, you can say, the most thin parts. So you can see the eyebrows are more thin than the head here. So then we get more darkness from those things, like the ears, as I said here, is also a very thin thing. So everything that is more thin will then get uh, less of the ambient occlusion and all that is thick will then get more of the ambient occlusion. This is really good when you're doing subsurface scattering. We have not touched that yet, but it's when you have some light that doesn't reflect directly, but go a little bit further. So like organic materials like skin and so on, have some shininess uh, below the surface as well. And then this ambient occlusion and inside will work very well to get a good result from that. And then you can of course add color into this to change color, but other than that, there is no special thing about ambient occlusion, but it's very useful and you should almost use it all the time when you're doing realistic material to get a good result out. So hopefully I've learned something about ambient occlusion now and I do as usual, uh, say bye for now and see you tomorrow.